the pro-life movement in the United States gets a surge of renewed hope and energy following the announcement Justice Anthony Kennedy is retiring from the Supreme Court. The 81-year-old announced last week he will depart the high court at the end of July. Kennedy, a Catholic, has ruled in favor of abortion during his time on the court, often playing the critical swing vote role. President Donald Trump says he will decide on his Supreme Court nominee to replace Kennedy on Monday, July 9th. In a letter to pro-life leaders during his presidential campaign, Trump promised to nominate pro-life justices to the Supreme Court. Joining us now is Marjorie Danenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List and the chair of then-candidate Trump's pro-life coalition. Marjorie, a big week right now. Indeed, Catherine. It's, this is major. And yeah. you are a big reason why President Trump promised he would nominate a pro-life Supreme Court justice. What do we mean by that? What is a pro-life judge? Well, by God's grace and some specific requests, he did commit to um, and, um, only nominating pro-life justice. And what that means is a constitutionalist judge, mm -hmm. a judge who reads the Constitution and interprets it as the founders wrote it, not in the way that he or she prefers for it to be, that doesn't legislate from the bench, that really looks to see what the text of the Constitution really is. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you come up with a pro-life uh, position. Uh, because you cannot find abortion or the abortion right anywhere in the Constitution. It had to be made up, and it was. And the big question right now is whether or not we will soon see Roe v. Wade overturned. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen for the court to even consider that? Well, there are hundreds of laws that have been passed all over the country that will be making their ways to the court. Some will, some won't, obviously. There are a couple of 15-week bills in Louisiana mm -hmm. and Mississippi. There's a, a, down, a couple of Down syndrome bills mm -hmm. in Indiana and Ohio. There's these are bills. bills banning abortion yeah. at these different points. Yeah, and so all of those are making their way up. Any one of those could be that that uh, that moment where it's overturned. It'll all depend upon who's on the court, the specifics of the case, and, and whether Roe is uh, begging the question or not. Mm. President Trump says he will not ask the Supreme Court nominees about their view on Roe v. Wade. What do you make of that? Well, it's a reasonable position to take because if he asks the question, they simply can't answer it in good faith or with integrity. They have to be um, looking at the case that they literally being asked, one of those cases or another that I just mentioned, not the case that they hope for it to be. So the, the details of the case, the context of the case are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Having said that, everybody on the list of potential nominees are very solid. They're constitutionalists, mm -hmm. strict constructionist type judges. So we think that uh, we have every hope that this is a very, very good moment in our history and that they will be poised to, um, to really start to give back to the people the right to legislate on this issue. Now, in order to actually confirm one of these nominees, a simple majority is needed mm -hmm. in the Senate for the Senate to do that. So what must be done in the coming weeks and months to ensure that we do confirm a justice? Yeah, well, that's the pressing question. In mm. addition to deep prayer every mm. single day, we have to look at the lay of the land, and that includes 49 pro-life uh, Republicans, two pro-abortion Republicans. Mm. Those two voted for Gorsuch, but mm -hmm. we can't take anything for granted. Then we have three pro-life Democrats, sometimes pro-life, sometimes not, mm. that voted for Gorsuch, but we can't take them for granted either. And why do I say that? Because that you can't underestimate the moment that we are in and what's at stake for the left. They are already spending, committing millions and millions, the pressure on the party, the pressure from the party, mm -hmm. and the pressure from the pro-abortion movement will be intense. So finally, Marjorie, I'm just curious, <laughs> is, do you have a personal favorite, someone you're hoping President Trump picks <laughs> to be his nominee? Well, I'm talking to the White House almost every day mm -hmm. and talking to um, Federalist Society mm -hmm. and Leonard Leo, these are people who are mm -hmm. very much in the center of this decision-making process, and of course we want to be as well. Mm -hmm. As much as we can, we, um, look, I can't help but say that Amy Barrett is mm -hmm. is the model of what the Susan B. Anthony list and um, would want to press forward in terms of a, of, a, of a great judge. She is a Catholic mom of seven, beloved by her students, universally admired by her colleagues. They all signed a letter saying we, no matter what their views were, they love her. Um, she she uh, would be a beautiful counter mm -hmm. to the women that are currently on the bench, really giving the lie, potentially giving the lie to the idea that somehow abortion is the great liberator and without it we can't be happy or free. We'll just have to <laughs> see who it is. Amen. Then. Marjorie Danenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you. Thank you, Catherine.